let's talk trash. The average American generates 4.38 pounds of it per day. That's 1,598.7 pounds a year, or almost 3 tons for a family of 4. But only 34.5% of this waste gets recycled or composted. And with landfills running to capacity, it is not only smart, but imperative that we do something about it. Now, change doesn't always have to be radical and complicated. Here's a simple part of the solution. Compost. What you call trash could be an untapped resource for your garden, something we like to call black gold. I'll show you how you can make it and why. I'm Siloe Oliveira, and I'm researching and putting into practice new and old ways of turning problems into solutions in my suburban homestead. In the last episode, we built a composting tumbler out of recycled materials. Now I'll show you how I use it, as well as the principles behind composting. Composting at home not only alleviates the burden on landfills, but creates a valuable, nutrient-rich resource for your garden. The internet is full of valuable tips and insights, but at times it can seem a bit confusing. So let me break it down to you. No pun intended. Compost is what's left after things like fruit, leaves, stems, wood, and even animals are broken down into organic matter by microorganisms. If you're new to composting, the most important thing you need to remember is that there's no wrong way of making compost. Now, it couldn't be that easy, you say? But well, it is. All the complicated metabolic processes are left to the fungi, protozoa, and bacteria in the soil. It's simple, and as long as you don't live in a place of extreme cold, drought, or heat, you wouldn't have a garden there anyways, you can compost. Now, there are guidelines for making compost faster, or more fertile, or to make it not smell bad. And therein lies the rub. Now, composting may seem complicated to a beginner because of the myriad of methods people are constantly debating and fighting about. And believe me, gardeners can fight about compost. For compost to happen, four things need to be present. Nitrogen-rich material, carbon-rich material, water, and oxygen. I've shown you how I've built a compost tumbler, so here's how I use it. Every two or three days, I take kitchen scraps and throw into the tumbler. I like to keep kitchen scraps in a stainless steel saucepan with a lid. It's easy to clean up and will last a long time, as well as it will keep the flies at bay. I only use raw plant materials such as fruit and vegetable peelings, spent flowers, rotten produce, etc. This is what we call wet or green material because it is rich in nitrogen. Fresh grass clippings and weeds would also be part of this group. I do not add cooked food or any animal product, especially if it contains fat, since they tend to attract rodents, raccoons, and other wildlife, and make your compost smell terrible. Eggshells are okay to compost though. I put in some dry material, like straw or dried up grass. I even throw in some shredded paper now and then. This is what we call dry or brown material, because it is carbon rich. Ideally, you should put in about half round to half green material for the composting to happen faster. But I always seem to be short on that, since I also use this as mulch. Your compost should be moist but not waterlogged. I close the tumbler door securing with a latch and rotate it a few times. Aerating your compost in order to add oxygen is important if you want fast composting. This keeps your compost from going anaerobic and smelling bad. A tumbler like this keeps the moisture level more constant, since it prevents evaporation while providing drainage through holes. It also makes turning the compost easier, keeps animals away from the food remains, thus making it more acceptable in an urban situation. But there are disadvantages, and I still think that a simple compost pile is the best solution. A simple and effective method of making a compost pile is the lasagna method. But who doesn't like lasagna? You add alternating layers of green and brown material, as well as a bit of soil. Depending on the ratio of green to brown material you have, your compost will heat up. This is thought to be by some as the most efficient state of composting, the gold seal of a competent gardener. If you really want to be technical, the ideal ratio of carbon to nitrogen is 30 to 1. Fresh grass, what we would consider green material, is about 15 to 1. A dry leaf, a brown material, is about 50 to 1. 
Therefore, the right balance of the two should provide the ideal scenario. But instead of scales and calculators, I think it's best to use intuition and observation. Making changes here and there are required. If your pile is too wet and starts to smell a bit, add more brown matter and cover it from rain. If it is too dry and slow to compost, add green material. Add oxygen by turning your compost and chances are it will start heating up. A hot compost is bacteria dominated and is thought to have the most fertility since it composts fast and is ready before nutrients leach away. But there is controversy amongst gardeners as some advocate a cold compost that is full of carbon rich brown material and is fungi dominated. It takes much longer to compost though. This is similar to what is found in forest floors, and in a future episode, we will be exploring more of this difference. And here are a few quick tips about composting. Your pile should be at least 4 feet cubed to start working properly. Composting can take anywhere from 2 months to 2 years to be ready, depending on what you put in and how often you turn it. Fall leaves and twigs can take a bit of time to break down because they are rich in lignin, Compost will decompose fast during summer and almost stop in winter time. Finished compost will be dark brown and will smell of good earth. But no matter how well you can make compost, it's still good. Even if it turns out to be less fertile than ideal, it will still be rich in organic matter that is essential for healthy soil. I personally don't tend much to my compost pile because of time. I just do a simple pile and let nature work for me. As for my tumbler experiment, we used it exclusively and continuously for a full growing season. We stopped during winter and let it do its own thing. This is the compost we got, nearly finished, and it does not smell bad. Some of the harder materials, like mango pits, coconut shells, and twigs, are still breaking down. And even though I still end up buying organic fertilizer to mend my soil, making compost is important for me since I can generate less waste that goes to the landfill. And it helps my garden look lush and beautiful. starting a new segment here for questions and answers from you, the viewer. If you have a question about gardening, or maybe even a rant about life, just send in an email to seedofchoice at gmail.com and I'll try to answer it at the best of my ability. Suburban Homestead only exists because of you, the community of awesome viewers and awesome gardeners. And I share some of my experience with gardening and I learn a lot too. If you want to support this channel, and you want to see more videos, just remember to like it, to comment on the videos, to subscribe, and tell a friend.